Good morning from the French Alps. It's race day. It's Mike here. Welcome back to cycling in the French Alps. I'm sorry about the socks today. They're pretty boring today. But I'm just rolling down to Clues and we've got the three Coles event, which is basically three mountain time trials on the last three climbs of stage eight of this year's Tour de France. So we've got Mont Saxony and Gorge de Bronze for starters, which is about six Ks long. Then we've got the Beast, the Col de Rom, which I never get on with. 45 to 50 minutes of pain. And then we've got the top half of the Columbia from Le Reposoir to the summit. So let's dive in, see how we get on. The format of the event allows us a super chilled out start to the ride. Here we're just riding out of the centre of clues, out towards the bottom of the climb. Uh, the first climb of the event, Mont Saxony, just through the lanes, kind of in the Bonville direction from clues. And then we arrive at the bottom of the starting mat of Mont Saxony. And here we go. So it's a 5.2 kilometre long climb, averaging 9.2% and climbs 486 metres. Now I knew John was going to pass me, but I didn't expect him to pass me after just 1.2 kilometres. And I was managed to hold about an average of 300 watts at this point. Off he goes, into the distance. I didn't pass many people, I put these guys in. They're not in the event, but who cares, I'm passing them. So coming up into the Gorge de Bronze itself, it's a stunning little climb this and for some reason we don't seem to ride it very often. I knew Rob Alpin was on my tail at this point and it wasn't going to be long until he came steaming past me three kilometres into the climb and I think he's taken at least two minutes out of me, maybe three. There he goes, off into the distance. Towards the top of the gorge, the gradient does ease, but at this point, I've been pushing nearly 300 watts, so I'm starting to fade a bit towards the top, and this is just the first climb. K to go board, and then it's up through the village of Mont Saxony, where they've already got the bunting out for the Tour de France in a couple of weeks' time, over the timing map, and round to the feed station, and it was a super hot day. It was like 30 degrees, so it was brilliant that you could just go up the climb with one bottle, fill up at the top, head off down the descent to the bottom of the next climb, the Col de Rom. I went 65 kilos, 75 kilos. <laughs> Rom, what's the average percentage, Mike? 9.5 is it? 9.5 with yeah, ram two, two first two kilometers what's above per kilo? 11. We, what's per kilo? We are the same animals. Yeah, we are. More or less. There's a lot, lot of front loading going on here. The bottom of the ROM's pancake flat. Here's my minute man, just about to take off. That's the last I'm going to see of him today. And here's the start for me. So you can see here, just watch the gradient here. So fluctuation. So we're at 0%, 1%, you can see the ROM looming in front of you. There's the first coal marker board on the right hand side and it just gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So in the space of about 50 to 60, 70, 80 meters, 11, 12, 13%, the ROM is a total monster. This time I'm only a kilometer in before John catches me, passes me, and leaves me. The 
Rom is a real sun trap, especially these first couple of kilometres. Brutally steep, mega hot. One point one kilometers in, and we're already about 120 meters above where we started. So just over this wall on the right, it's really precipitous down to the valley floor. And again, here comes Rob Alpen. If you click the link in the top right hand corner, that'll give you a more in-depth look at the Calder Rom. three people I think in total when there was probably what four or five past me four k's up the rom and the gradient eases slightly but look at the gear this dude's pushing. He's a skinny climber. It looks like he's on the big ring. You gotta grab the shade when you can on the ROM. It was in the attack a few years back and it was carnage. You might remember the Calder ROM from the 2009 Tour de France. It's the climb where Bradley Wiggins and Lance Armstrong were nearly doing track stands as they were trying to outwit one another. 1k to go board and I've got this guy in my sights. He'd gone up Mont Saxony quicker than me but uh, I was managing just to close the gap. Slowly but surely, I think I was a bit ambitious in moving out to the centre of the road to get past him at this point because it just seemed to take forever pull alongside him but got there in the end just as we're coming up to the 500 meters to go board at the summit of the Calder Rom. Over the timing mat, up to the feed station dump the bike, collapse in a heap. straight ahead at this point. As you turn left there, it does continue to climb for a little bit after the official summit and then it's a bit kind of roly-poly until you get onto the descent as we aim down towards the reposoir. Local cat isn't too bothered about me pooning down towards him. So this is the last one, Hilda Columbia. 7 kilometers, 650 meters of up. Paced the effort really well on the ROM. 270 watts all the way up, pretty steady, so I'm happy with that. Just got to pace myself up here now. Aiming for about 270 watts. Maybe try and do a negative split. See you at the top. So someone's gonna ask me what a negative split is. It's basically trying to do the second half of the climb quicker than you do the first half. But didn't quite work out that way. We haven't suddenly leapt across the border to Switzerland, that's our local Haute Savoie flag on the right there.
three k's to go on the Columbia, and as you come around the corner here, you're out onto a veranda, and it's always a headwind at this point. It felt like it was going to be a tailwind on the earlier part there, but you get out onto here and be under no illusions, it's going to be a headwind. From this point you can see the summit, it's pretty much straight ahead there and the restaurant and cafe at the top, can't quite see it on the GoPro but it's definitely there and you can see what you're aiming for. The valley is so wide that it's quite deceptive but it's consistently 10% going up this last section towards the summit. Somebody's already been out with a paintbrush for the Tour de France. 1k to go. Check out the luggage on board with this bike packer. Chapeau in this heat. It doesn't look it, but I'm actually trying to sprint here because there's a photographer just on the left hand side there. So that's the summit of the Columbia. 1,680 meters altitude. Oh dear. So that's the final climb of stage eight of this year's Tour de France. Oh, felt like my watts were fading towards the end there. I started off aiming for 270, dropped down quite quickly to around about 260, but just managed to sustain 260 watts for that last section, which was what? 35 minutes so I think first climb 25 minutes 299 watts average second climb ROM PB possibly 45 minutes average 272 or 3 I think it was and then 260 watts on this last section Oh God, it's hot, hot man, hot, hot. I thought it was gonna be a tailwind up the Columbia, which it never is, and it wasn't. Last three kilometers, headwind as usual, but I suppose it made it feel slightly cooler. Anyway, that's it. Roll down to clues, see you at the bottom. So this is Rob, Outroute Superstar. Tell us how you got on last week. Ah, uh, last week, what did we do? I ended up uh, 12th at the Outroute Cron, three days of that, just timing uphill climbs, like it was today, which seems to be the new format. Yeah, exactly. COVID but, friendly. Um, <laughs> COVID friendly, but uh, really cool event here today. Uh, Bella Club of Clues put it on, really reasonable entry fees, great timing, great, great vitamin, really good food. And just tell us quickly about your Oscar movie appearance. Ah, yes. I'm, uh, my 15 seconds of fame is... Uh, 15 seconds? I'm not... Is that, is that generous? Probably five. Okay, probably <laughs> five. Oh, but I'm on the trailer, though. Okay. No, but I won the I won the yellow jersey at the beginning of the Oak Route 2014 by winning the time trial in Geneva. So I got in the movie Icarus uh, as the 
supposedly uh, implied doped cyclosportive rider in the yellow jersey for the oak route. So. And Icarus is on Netflix and it won an Oscar for best documentary. Best documentary. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Great. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, Mike. So this is John. John runs Alpine Cadence over in uh, Le Plan. And uh, tell us how you got on in the Oat Route last week. Uh, Oat Route last week was fantastic. Great to do a three-day event in relatively normal conditions. It was a really nice experience. People from lots of different countries. Fantastic weather. Beautiful part of Switzerland. Um, three great days of riding. That was superb. And today, have you won the age group? Um, I think so. Yeah. Uh, when I last checked, I had. Yeah, I was winning. John so, always wins the age group. Not always. Same age group as me, but he always wins. <laughs> no, I've, had, so, I, right. I've, I've had a few wins in my age right. group, but there's right. uh, still a few good uh, oldies out there. Sometimes <laughs> beat me. Cheers. Thanks, John. So that's first event done in this COVID year. I uh, love the format, three time trials, neutralized descents. You can really keep on top of your liquids at the top of each climb as well, which normally you're under pressure just to bob on. So fourth and age group at the minute. I think there's a wedding going on behind me here. Um, great organization. Thanks for watching. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Meantime, I'm gonna go home. And this is not gonna last very long. Oh. Uh -huh.